good morning students uh, today the topic is communication channels okay the today topic is communication channels we are uh, going to do the wired transmission okay let's start with the transmission media transmission media uh, is simply the means to which data is transferred from one place to the another or we can say the transmission media is a pathway that carries the information from sender to receiver uh, this could be through the wire either the fiber optics vacuum or coaxial cable we use different types of cables or the waves to transmit the data data is transmitted normally through electrical or electromagnetic signals transmission media is also called the communication channel so uh, this is uh, the definition of transmission media what is transmission media the transmission media means whenever anyone wants to send the data to the other person he uses he or she uses some transmission media through which that data is traveled through basically we have the two types of transmission medias the first one is wired and the second one is wireless in our syllabus right now we have the wired communication what is wired communication where we are using some number of wires for communication for example we we are working on the computer and that computer is connected with some wires what it means we are using the internet services by using the any wire either the coaxial cable to shit pair cable any cable so what it means we are sending whenever we are sending any data it uses the wired communication channel through which the data is transmitted from source to destination and the second one is wireless wireless means where no wire is used we can use the number of waves or the vacuums of we are sending the data in the form of waves the best example is of the wireless media is like uh, right now we are in a class and you are receiving uh, the data that is sent from my side on your cell phones but no wire is connected with your cell phones how the internet is applicable on your cell phones through the signals and that signals coming from the different towers so this is the basic definition of transmission media transmission media means i am again repeating this thing transmission media means a media who is responsible for transferring the signal from one end to the other end from source to destination okay so in our syllabus we have right now the topic of wired transmission wired transmission means we have a transmission media which is a wired wired means we are using some number of wires it is also referred to as the guided or the bounded transmission media we can also say is the wired transmission media is a guided why the name is guided is there because we can guide the media to travel through the number of wires and reached at the destination point signals being transmitted are directed and con confined in a narrow pathway by using the physical links all the signals that are transferred from the sender to receiver they follow the specified path a best example is suppose you switch on the fan it is a wired transmission is it whenever you switch on the button a wire that is connected with that button on the other side that wire is connected with on that particular fan whenever you on the switch the fan is automatically starts so what it means the signals or the current whenever you click on that uh, button the current is passes through that wire and traveled to the fan this is called the wired transmission and now compare it with the uh, wireless transmission now you can see the number of examples now we have the wireless fans a fans which have the remotes so what we can do we simply click the button on the remote and it will be automatically start the best example is the acs that you have the acs in your homes what we you can do you can simply press the power button on the remote no wire is connected with your remote along with the ac you simply click on the button and ac automatically start this can be happened in the case of wireless transmission so this is the difference between the wired and the wireless transmission clear now we have the different features of 
wired transmission the first one is high speed the speed of the data that is traveled through the wired transmission is very high second secure secure means the data that is traveled through the uh, with the help of wired transmission is very secure how the data is secure because the data is the data can be followed by a specified path specified path means a wire is there and data can follow the same path that is specified by the user the third used for comparatively shorter distances uh, this is a third feature of the uh, wire transmission that this type of transmission is used for shorter distances shorter distances means whenever the distance is short and we want to communicate with each other then we use the wire transmission because whenever we are uh, suppose we are working in a wire uh, we are working in the uh, wide area network WAN, one of the types of the network here we can use the wireless transmission because in the long distances we cannot use the wire transmission because the number of wires are used in that area so it can be used for the shorter distances clear now uh, this is the example one of the example of wired transmission media as the name implies the wired we can use the number of wires whenever we are using the wired transmission uh, this is the example of wire now the next now we have the different types of uh, wired transmission media along with that just start with the first topic that is called telephone lines a uh, telephone line or telephone circuit is a single user circuit on a telephone communication system telephone lines are used to deliver the landline telephone services and the digital subscriber line that is called dsl phone cable services to the premises a telephone line or the telephone circuit is a single user circuit on a telephone communication system uh, telephone overhead lines are connected to the public switched telephone networks that is also called a telephone exchange so the first one is the telephone lines we have the landline cell we have the landline phones in our homes a telephone line that is connected with that telephones and on the other side that lines are also connected with the telephone exchange or you can say the public switch telephone networks what will happen whenever you want to make a call you simply make a call on your landline phone a dial tone is there from where the dial tone is coming the dial tone is coming from the exchange means a particular uh, uh, a particular signals that are that you are receiving that are receiving from the exchange to your particular cell phones now this is uh, how the telephone network in works how the dial up internet works now you can see the number of uh, cases then you have a landline and phones in your home and you have the uh, network connection is there now look at the diagram let's just start the diagram from the computer now look at your screens a computer is there what it means that you have a computer in your uh, homes now the telephone is there telephone means a wire that is connected with your telephone or the modem that comes from your modem and connected with your computer from which we can access the internet but from uh, telephone from where the wire is coming look at there the device is there this is also called a switch switch means a number of wires are connected look at the ports are there these are the different ports where a number of wires that are connected on the switch and goes to the different homes for a different telephone systems now a single wire that is connected with that switch from where it comes that it comes from the internet service provider that is called isp for example i have a connection of bsnl in my home then the internet service provider is bsnl which can provide look at here which can provide the internet so in a simple way i just want to say one thing that a wire that from the telephone exchange which carries a signal comes to our area connected with a switch and from that switch a single wire that comes from a switch towards to our telephone network and or our modem and a wire from a modem is connected to the computer system and we are able to access the internet so this is the process that how the internet is works in our system 
in our homes through a wired transmission. This is the example of wired transmission. Clear? Now, the next is leased line. What is leased line? A leased line also known as a dedicated line. Dedicated means a point to point connection between a sender and receiver. A single and a private connection between two devices that is called dedicated. Connects two locations for a private voice and or a data communication services. This is called a leased line. A leased line is a reserved circuit between the two points. It is a reserved circuit. Why it is called a reserved? Because it is reserved only for that particular sender and receiver. Suppose a dedicated link is made between me and one of you students. Uh, for example, MD Rajwan. The name is there. Now, what it means only me and Rajwan can communicate on that particular circuit. No, not other students or the, anybody else who can use that particular circuit. It is called a leased line or a dedicated line. Clear? A leased line is always active and available for a fixed monthly fees. It can uh, anytime be available. What it means, the 24 by 7, this link is available and it has some monthly uh, fixed amount that we have to pay for that particular leased line. Okay. Now, uh, look at there, the leased line connection is there. Exchange is there. In the previous diagram, we can also see the exchange is there from the number of wires that are coming to a switched network. The difference is here we have a switch where a wire is connected and after that switch, Suppose one into eight switch, what it means, it has the eight different links on that particular switch. So what we can happen, the eight different wires that are coming from switch and connected to the eight different homes. But in the case of leased line, we can we also know it is a dedicated link. Dedicated means a dedicated link is between the sender and the receiver. In this case, who is the sender? The exchange is the sender. And look at the diagram, look at your screens. The yellow wire is there, what it means, it is a leased line directly comes from the exchange and connected to our office. So this is the example of leased line. Clear? A dedicated connection is there. Now the next is a switch line. A switch line is a communication link established through the use of switching equipment, which allows a connection to be established between two transmission devices. A switch line provides a temporary connection between the two user terminals or the machines and only lasts for a certain period. What it means, we have a temporary connection. We have a whenever we want to make a temporary connection between the two devices, we use the switch line is there. A switch equipment is there. With the help of that switch, we can make the temporary connection between the two communicating devices. Okay? Switch lines minimize the line cost while maintaining the advantage of interconnected system. It, it is based on the interconnected system principle. What it mean, What do you mean by the interconnected systems? The systems that are internally connected with each other. They are less expensive compared to the leased line and are often appropriate when there is low traffic as well as for connecting several remote sites. It is less uh, expensive as compared to the leased line. Why the less comp uh, expensive? Because in the case of leased line, a dedicated link is made between the sender and the receiver. But in the case of switched line, we can make the multiple uh, connections with the help of switch. So uh, this is the example. Now look at your screens very carefully. It is a uh, uh, switches over there. Now look at the ports, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what it means, the number of ports in a switch, that means a number of devices, that how many number of devices we can add with a single switch. So what it means in this diagram, we can add the eight different systems with a single switch. So what we require, we only require a single wire that is coming from the exchange and connected on the switch. If a single wire is connected on the switch with the help of that single wire and with the help of switch, we can be also able to add the eight different computers 
what it means with the help of single wires we are we can uh, eligible for simultaneously implementing the eight different systems the on uh, the internet is working on the eight different systems with the help of this clear so uh, this is this is all about the uh, least uh, switched line and the previous one is least line okay the next is coaxial cable it is a cable that is used between the sender and the receiver to communicate their uh, to communicate their data coaxial cable formerly called cox we can also call it a cox basically it is a copper wire with metal shielding designed to provide immunity against the noise and the uh, greater bandwidth oh so what are the different parts of this cable basically it is a copper wire a wire that is covered with a metal shield a metal shield is outside the wire why that metal shield is there to provide the immunity why from where the immunity to avoid the noise to avoid the external noise that we have that particular uh, metal shielding is there and for a greater bandwidth a cox can transmit signals over a larger distance at a higher speed as compared to the twisted pair cable basically it is a better than twisted pair cable and whenever we are uh, using uh, the large area to uh, for transmitting our signals then we used a coaxial cable clear so uh, we can also say it is a cox cox is also the second name of the coaxial cable first we can discuss the diagram a diagram is there look at there it is a, it uh, the first that is a copper there is it is called the inner conducting co which is responsible for communicating the data from one end to the other end but that inner conducting core that is covered by the inner insulator a inner insulator or you can say the plastic coating is there and that plastic coating is covered by the bearded outer conductor a outer conductor is there a mesh is there mesh means a mesh type of uh, wire are, are there which can be covered by the inner conductor and at the outer most part they have the protected plastic cover now compare this cable with your cable you all have a cable connection in your homes the wires are there firstly they have the black covering is out over their wire then we have a silver mesh is there then we have a plastic coated transparent coating is there this is called the inner insulator and last we have the copper wire is there this wire is same as your cable uh, or wire clear this is all about the uh, diagram of this uh, wire now we are discussing uh, this diagram a cox has a central core of stiff copper conductor for transmitting signals so what it means look at the diagram this is the copper wire which is responsible for transmitting the signals from sender to the receiver clear this is covered by an insulating material and this is called the insulating material which is also you can call the plastic coating is there the white one is there inner insulator the insulator is encased by a closely woven bared metal outer conductor that acts a shield against noise this is the bared outer conductor or you can say the mesh is there now this mesh again is covered by a plastic uh, protected plastic cover this is called a, pla a protected plastic cover the outer conductor is again enclosed by a plastic insulating cover the structure or uh, is shown in the following figure uh, this is the structure of the wire how the wire looks like and compare this wire with a cable of wire clear the both are the same next uh, next we have the application of coaxial wires in analog telephone network a single coaxial network can carry about 10000 voice signals what it means at the same time this wire is able to send the 10000 voice signals from one end to the other end this can be happen in the case of whenever we are using this wire in telephone networks clear in digital telephone networks a, co a coaxial has a data rate of 600 mbps what it means 600 megabits per second it is able to send the 600 mbps the speed of uh, if we are using in the digital telephone networks this wire the speed of this wire is 600 mbps in cable tv networks as we discussed earlier we can also use this cable in our cable tv networks 
networks and traditional ethernet local area networks in the previously whenever we have the local area networks we have a coaxial cable so we can use the coaxial cable in our traditional local area networks and also in mains what is main the metropolitan area network whenever we are going to make a man a man is a combination of number of lands if the land is made up of the coaxial cable automatically the man is made up of the coaxial cable clear so uh, this is all uh, about the coaxial cable these are only the applications or you can say the advantages of coaxial cable the next is now uh, the next topic is now the difference between the broadband and the baseband now we have the two different type of wires so one of the one of it called a broadband and other is called the baseband now let's start discussing with the first one the broadband broadband systems use modulation technique to reduce the effect of noise in the environment broadband transmission employs multiple channels unidirectionally transmission using the combination of phase and amplitude modulation what about the baseband baseband is a digital signal is transmitted on the medium using one of the signal code like nrz it is a signal code or you can say the rz or the manchester bypass m code basically these are the codes through which we are able to send the signals in the case of baseband is called the baseband transmission these are following differences between the broadband and baseband basically we have the wires we can discuss the coaxial wires we have the different type of wires are there we have the broadband wires we have the baseband wires once you can go through with the differences then you can know what is the baseband and the broadband transmission now the broadband transmission what is broadband transmission the first is it is used in digital signaling means a digital signals can be transferred in the case of baseband transmission clear frequency division multiple uh, multiplexation is not possible we uh, we done the topic of multiplexing where we have the fdm that is called the frequency division multiplexing that is not done in the case of baseband clear baseband is bidirectional transmission third is baseband is a bidirectional by means both side the data can send and receive short distance signaling traveling what it means basement transmission can be used in the case of short distance or whenever we want to send the data in the short distance then we use the basement transmission clear entire bandwidth is for single signal transmission the entire the complete bandwidth is used at the same time for sending the single signal transmission for sending the single signal from one end to the other end example is there ethernet is using baseband for lan lan is called the local area network whenever we are making the local area network ethernet systems are there that is using the baseband for the local area network this is all about the baseband transmission in the next is broadband now the differences are there broadband is analog Look at the uh, your screen. Baseband is digital. Broadband is analog. Now the next is transmission of data is unidirectional. Unidirectional means the direction of the data is at the single site. Third, signal traveling distance is long. Whenever we want to send the signals in a long distance, then we use broadband transmission. Frequency division multiplexing is possible in the baseband. frequency division multiplexing is not possible but in the case of broadband frequency division multiplexing is possible simultaneously transmission of multiple signals over different frequencies in this case the complete bandwidth is responsible for sending more than one signals at the same time but that can cannot be happen in the case of baseband example used to transmit the cable tv to the premises the best example is the cable tv that is uh, available in our homes or the signals that are coming at the cable operator at the single site but the number of systems or the number of televisions they can show the cable tv at the same time so these are the differences between the baseband and the broadband 
again we have the some differences over there basement transmission and second is broadband transmission the differences are same in basement transmission the type of signal is digital in the case of basement the signals are digital but in the case of broadband the signals are used analog clear second basement transmission is bidirectional we can send or see the data on the both the directions but in the case of broadband the direction is or the direction of the nature is unidirectional clear third signals can only travel through short distance in the case of basement we can uh, use the short distance to travel the signals but in the case of broadband the distance is very far or the signals can be traveled over long distance without being attenuated attenuated means without being any interruption the fourth it works well with the bus topology basement is very compatible with the bus topology and broadband it, it is used with the bus as well as the tree topology and in the last in the case of basement we have the manchester and different manchester encodings are used encoding means we have the different types of encoding are there whenever we are using the baseband transmission the number of encoding methods that are used which are called the manchester and the different manchester encoding and in the case of broadband only the psk shift phase key it is this is called the phase shift key encoding is used it is one of the other type of encoding or you can say the psk encoding is used in the case of broadband transmission uh this is the diagram of baseband and broadband you can see uh, the difference the single the single signal is traveled in the case of baseband multiple signals can be traveled in the case of broadband okay the next concept is the optical fiber cable optical fiber cable are transparent flexible fiber made up of a glass or plastic through which light waves can pass or you can say in the case of optical fiber cable the data can be traveled in the form of light a bunch of fiber optic cables is shown in the diagram now look at the diagram these are the a bunch of the optical fiber what is the optical fiber means it is made up of the it basically it is a transparent and it is made up of either of a glass or a plastic and the data can be traveled in the form of light it is called the optical fiber currently all the internet service providers they are using the optical fiber cable for transmitting the data because the speed is very high clear now we can discuss the structure of the fiber optic cable a cross section of the fiber optic cable reveals the three parts basically it have it reveals the three parts let's start discussing one by one the first is core it is the innermost portion of the optical fiber through which the light propagates basically it is the internal part through which the light is communicated from the sender to the receiver and if the light is communicated what it means the data is transferred from sender to the receiver it is cylindrical in shape and it is made up of the flexible glass and of higher refractive index basically it is made we can also know it is made up of the glass or a plastic the diameter of the core of a single mode is fiber mode fiber is 8 to 10 unimeter while multi mode fibers are 50 um in diameter Me means it is very small in diameter because we can only send the signals in the form of light it is also called the optical wave guide since it is the main channel through which the light signals are transmitted it is this is called the core the second part is called the cladding the core is surrounded by a glass cladding what it means that core is covered by a material and that material is known as cladding the glass of cladding has a lower refractive index than the core the uh, the refractive index is less as compared to the core the index is less refractive of cladding as compared to the core why because the core is responsible for sending the signals from one end to the other end 
This enables total internal reflection of light waves in the core and eventually propagation of light waves within the core. Basically, what is the uh, function of cladding? Basically, it can propagate the lights. The light, suppose the light is traveling through the core and if the light is goes outside that core, the cladding can control the light and maintain that light or the maintain that wave inside the core. So this is the function of cladding. Now the third one is the outer coating, the outer coating, or you can say the jacket. The outer jacket is a thin plastic sheet or a coating that is applied to the light. It prevents light rays from out, outside to enter the optical fiber. Why the outer jacket is there? To prevent the outer signals that cannot enter into that particular fiber. Fibers are typically bundled together, which bundle is covered by the protective outer sheet that prevents the fiber optic from physical damage. So the what is the major uh, function of the outer jacket to maintain it from the physical damage, outside physical damage, and to prevent the outer light signals that cannot enter into the particular fiber optics. So this is the diagram. Now everything is clear with that diagram. Now look at the diagram. The optical fiber is there. Look at there. The core is there. It is called a white part is called a core. What it means the core is responsible for traveling the distance for traveling the data from sender to the receiver. Second is called the cladding. This core is covered by this white part. Look at the diagram. The white part is there. This is called the cladding and Outerly, it is covered by some other material that is called the coating or you can also say the jacket. And the main idea of this coating or the jacket is to prevent it from the physical damage or to prevent it from the outer waves that cannot enter into that particular waves. So this is all about the fiber optic or you can say the optical fiber cable. I think the Whole one is available on your screens. It is a simple question. You have to get the answer. Make it fast. Yes, sir. 